Hello and welcome to this video. Where I carry pizza. We find ourselves today in the quaint colonial town of Williamsburg. After having a good first experience on Amtrak to New York, we decided to do the same again to get to Williamsburg and managed to get some great tickets at only $60 for both of us return. Union Station is really pretty as far as train stations go and after a short Uber ride from our home, we arrived with plenty of time to spare. You okay? Yeah. Especially given that our train was delayed by half an hour. Something we learned after our first Amtrak experience was to head for the quiet car, where everybody is required to treat that particular car like a library. This allowed us to get some work done and while away the time as the scenery changed and we passed through a series of different towns. It went so quick, it was four hours. Delayed by half an hour, but not too bad. And now we're in Williamsburg. We are waiting for our Uber to get to the hotel. He's one minute away. Thanks to the train delay, we arrived later than anticipated, so just went to our room, ordered an Instacart grocery delivery, and went to bed, waking up the next morning to have breakfast and start exploring. The Woodlands Hotel and said breakfast is nothing to write home about, but it is super convenient in terms of its location because on the same property is the Colonial Williamsburg Visitor Center, where if you're just visiting Williamsburg for the day, you can park and get your tickets to get on the shuttle bus and head into the village to see the sights. We really had no plan as to what we wanted to see or do, so we got off at the first stop and just started walking. We did learn that if an establishment has a flag outside, that means that you can walk inside to get a richer experience of the place. Sometimes the buildings are just open and empty for you to explore on your own, and other times there are interpreters there to help enrich the story and tell you more of the history of the place that you're visiting. The tickets you buy at the visitor center is your pass into these buildings where there are interpreters and they will be checking for your tickets. Otherwise, if you don't have those tickets, simply walking around the town and enjoying the architecture and going into the unmanned exhibits is just as enriching. Today, we're going to go through both the first and second floors of the Capitol. We're going to talk about uh, British law, government, and politics. Uh, we'll start right here in the general court. Ed is upstairs. He's listening to us talk through Ed's the chamber of the House of We just so happen to arrive at the start of the tour of the Capitol building. I say that not just because he's chief magistrate of the general court, but also because he's chief executive of the entire colony. He must be none other than the... Uh, yeah, the royal governor. We actually learned quite a bit about the history of Williamsburg and the US Constitution on this tour. And I was quite fascinated that the interpreter was talking in present tense. As if we were actually in the 17 and 1800s. After the Capitol building tour, we headed to the public jail building. Which seemed quite sterile on this day, but you can just imagine the squalor that the prisoners must have experienced when it was in full use.
Then we made our way down Duke of Gloucester Street, which is the highlight of the Colonial Williamsburg village. And here we found ourselves just in time for another performance. As entertaining as the performance was, it was quite harrowing to think about what really happened in those days. We carried on our walk down the main road, enjoying the architecture and popping into the different establishments. In some of the places you can actually buy the wares and in others it's simply a demonstration of what the locals might have been doing back then. The village itself is really quaint and quite idyllic and has a very British feel as you can imagine, given that it was the British settlers that built it. I particularly enjoyed learning about the wigs and how the wig makers made the hair pieces and how much the wigs meant to the gentry and how much time and money they invested into them. Next we went into a store where they had clothing and accessories and undergarments and soaps for sale. Then we headed outside to the market square where there were more things on sale. We didn't buy anything at either place. We're minimalists, don't you know? But it was fun to see the colonial mementos they had available to buy. Just as the heat of the midday sun and humidity was really ramping up, we found ourselves in the right place at the right time for something quite special. By this time though, we were really quite hot and tired and ready for a good cup of coffee. And it just so happened that we had reached the end of the road and found ourselves back in modern civilization. This is Merchant Square where you can find an abundance of restaurants and bars and shops and boutiques and most importantly, coffee. So once we were fully caffeinated, we headed out and continued on our walking route. And this took us to the grounds of the William & Mary University. The 
Being an academic, you can't stop Jean from exploring a good old university. Apparently, this university is one of the oldest in the country. It didn't take long though before our tummies told us it was time to eat and our Happy Cow app led us to the Mellow Mushroom. This is quite a funky place with great food and we were thrilled to find out that it's a chain with one not too far from us in Northern Virginia. El Noray, John wins for the healthy option. And this is the medium. With our hunger and thirst satiated, we continued exploring Merchant Square and we really enjoyed it. It had quite a alfresco European vibe. It makes all the difference when they pedestrianize a quaint commerce area like this. And what makes it even more quaint is that just a few short blocks away, you find yourself in a meadow watching cows. It might have been a cowbell, but I told John it was the chime indicating wine o'clock. He complied obediently. By the time we finished, it was nearly closing time for the exhibitions, so we quickly popped into one of the museums and then continued ambling up the main street back to the shuttle stop where we started the day. <laughs> Hello, sir. What you doing, sir? Are you a gentleman? But of course. And what do we know about that gesture? Napoleon. Not only did it make it easier for painters to paint people because it was a more pleasing posture. So that the hands don't dangle by their they sides like lifeless hands. appendages. And it made the people seem more regal and... Which it does, doesn't it? It does indeed. You wear it well. It really was a lovely time of day, not only because the heat was starting to abate, but also because it became quieter and the light became more golden. So it's the end of the day on our first exploration of Williamsburg. Yeah, we bought, bought these multi-day passes so we can come again and again, because there's just no way you do it all in one day. We hopped back on the shuttle with the intention of going back to the hotel, but then something else caught our eye, so we hopped back off again. That is the beauty of these hop-on, hop-off shuttles. You just get to create your own adventure. And as it turns out, we ended up hopping off once more to enjoy a nice sundowner. We watched the light fade, the crowds grow, and the ghost tour walk by before admiring the Christmas shop window display and hopping on one more time back to the hotel.
stretching to the Mississippi River and beyond all the way to Alta California. This is the Royal Governor's Palace. It made me feel like we were walking on the set of something not dissimilar to Downton Abbey. exactly where we started. I told you. <laughs> do we go there or do we go there? No. No, we're blocked. <laughs> Wrong way. Go back. Wrong way. Here we go. You're going the less trod. This way. That way was much more trodden. Oh no, look where we found it. Oh, that was easy. You did, you did. We're in the middle. But you will see the, you will see it from the top. There's no rules. I think that maze might be the highlight the of maze, my... The maze? I thought you were talking about the palace. <laughs> yeah, the palace was also good. That was the governor's palace and very interesting stories. Yeah, um, revolution time. Revolution and... Uh, Down with the British. <laughs> Down with the British Empire. Lots of changes and thankfully those changes <laughs> were made. 
but uh, yeah, quite interesting to see how people lived, what they took for granted, mm. and uh, what we take for granted these days. But that was awesome. I love these gardens as well. It's a real um, oasis, especially Let's beneath. Let's go there to the little bridge. Especially beneath the trees, escaping the heat and humidity. Oh, it's a bad day today. It's a lot hotter and humid, more humid Ooh. today. Um, but the gardens are so beautifully kept mm. here at the palace. This is, uh, you could basically spend a whole day here, I, I reckon. See. But that maze is awesome. I've, I've said to Jean several times, I want to go in a real life maze. And here we go. We found it all the way here in Williamsburg. There are a lot of serene scenes around here. It's, it really is a photographer's delight in Williamsburg, not only for the architecture, but also the nature photography. We did 18,000 steps yesterday, wasn't it? Nearly 19,000 steps walking around the main street of Williamsburg yesterday, the Duke of Gloucester Street. We were meant to be uh, heading out to Jamestown tomorrow doing our trusted house sitters, but we've just received notification that um, that's not going to happen. So we have to make a plan for our accommodation for a couple of nights. An extra stay. So I think we're going to go and find somewhere to have brunch and figure out where we're going to go. I don't know what we did. We had such a small breakfast. I don't, I, don't know know. I don't know why we didn't eat. It's a buffet breakfast. So. They serve a continental breakfast at this Woodlands Hotel. And, and we um, both decided we're not hungry. Yeah. yeah. We did now, not. Now, of course, we starve. Love. Yeah, but then also, continental yeah. breakfast is a relative term. Yeah. We've discovered here in America. They've got no idea <laughs> what a continental breakfast is, but you know, we take what we can get. Off we went on our mission to find something to eat and along the way discovered some lovely places we would have really enjoyed going into, except that they were all closed. That is so bloody cute. That is so cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not open though. No, it's a, for lunch and dinner. Sunday, 4 p.m. We'll have to come back. Oh, here's another precarious beer place. Apparently mm -hmm. they need two in a time. Look. Eventually, we did find somewhere open that could offer us some vegan options. There's some carrots. The edamame, the olives. I won't do olives, I'll do chickpeas. Do you want something to drink? With something in our bellies, we headed back to the museum that we had visited the previous afternoon, but didn't get to finish because of closing time. There were lots of examples and artifacts to admire, but my particular favourite were the portraits with pets. Fun fact, the signage for tradespeople and their businesses was very literal back in the day because of the high illiteracy rate. Our next stop was the home of Hi. a gentleman, getting a peek at how the upper class might have lived. Like a I know. Then we stopped off at the courthouse and learned a bit about the legal system before going into the printing press to see how they got their news out there and how they bound books. This was really fascinating, not only because we saw the analogue way in which they created their newspaper back in the day, but also because we got talking to this gentleman who shared a little bit about himself and how he landed up being an interpreter in colonial Williamsburg. 
he'd been working here for many decades and shared with us how these exhibitions in Colonial Williamsburg have evolved over time. Because visitors to this historical site, especially American visitors apparently, want the real experience, but they don't want it to be too real, if you know what I mean. Now we're just waiting for the bus. It is very hot and it is very humid. And we've been walking all day. Let's see how many steps we've done. Not as many as yesterday. No, I don't think so. I think we've had a much slower pace today. We're at 12,600 steps. Yesterday we were at 16,000. No, 18, 19,000. It is the end of the day. Is it? I think we're still going to do some stuff. Well, all the all the exhibitions have closed, yeah. and um, I really enjoyed going into them today because we were asking lots of questions. It was much quieter on a Sunday than a Saturday. But we had the discussion now. Abigail was asking more personal, modern-day questions, and you're not sure whether the people are answering truthfully or in character, in person or in character or in person. Mm. Yeah. But just, I'm interested to know about the people who are in costume, who are doing the craft, and they what they, what's the their craft? backstory? Like, are they actual printing people, and are they actual leather workers? And so now we're going to get on the bus. Thank goodness for this shuttle bus. We're going to go get something cold to drink, and then we're going to head to the university side to get some nice golden light shots. How delightful is this? This is one of the coolest places in town. Literally and figuratively. Yes. Huh? It's so cool under the... Since you get in the canopy. Under yeah. the canopy. Not a very strong dapple because... Yeah. That is so creepy. They're very lifelike. Oh. But Blair, which project tea? Yeah, with the little bridge. Yeah. It is a very steep And with that, our time at the Woodlands Hotel in Colonial Williamsburg had come to an end. And we were heading off to our next stay, our impromptu getaway. We got an Uber here, 
I like the um, oldie worldy feel of this it's place. The old world it's feel. got charm. Yes, charm is what charm it's got. I know this place is definitely not your. Um, it's not a chain. No, it feels hotel, like a family run so. kind of place, and I love that it's surrounded by pine trees. And this place is dog friendly as well. After our swim, we took a short walk to the wine tasting room. Even though this wasn't a planned stay, it actually turned out to be the best way to end off our visit in this part of Virginia. We stayed one night and then got back on the train and headed home. Of course, we went for one last dip while we could. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next video. Bye!